Word of Hope Ministries, where we are loving God, loving all people, and changing the world. Word of Hope Ministries. And now, your host, Dr. D.Z. Cofield. I'm Dr. D.Z. Cofield, Senior Pastor at the Good Hope Missionary Baptist Church, and I want to welcome you to this edition of Word of Hope Ministries. The number one prerogative of every woman is to change her mind. The ability to say yes after she has said no, or the ability to say no after she has said yes. But for somebody today, changing your mind is not just a prerogative, it should be your priority. Man, woman, boy, or girl, you need to make a change in your mind. You need to change how you think and change how you live. Change your perspective regarding a situation or a circumstance. Today we begin a new message entitled, The Blessing of Changing Your Mind. Here's what I want you to know. If you have life, health, and strength, and I know you do because you're watching right now, then I need you to know whatever decisions you have made in your past, if you recognize that those decisions are not good, are not God glorifying, are not resulting in your growth in the Lord, then I want to encourage you to change your mind, change your thought process. In our text today, we have a son who told his father no, but later realized he had made a mistake and he changed his mind. And there was another son who said yes, but never acted on the yes that he gave verbally. Some would argue that son that said yes initially never intended to follow through on his statement. Well, I want to focus on that son who said no and then changed his mind and said yes. For somebody today, you have said no to God, but God says it's not too late to say yes. You say, but you know what, God? I I'm not feeling it, I don't see it. God says, well, maybe you haven't in the past, but maybe life has taught you some lessons and now you recognize you need to say yes. So today, let's get started on the blessings of changing your mind. Let's get to our message. So I was going through a list this past week and identified what are called the top five prerogatives of women. Top five prerogatives of women. Uh, James Brown said, it's a man's world, but it wouldn't be nothing without a woman or a girl. Somebody said, a man may be the head of the house, but the woman's the neck. <clears throat> and so whichever way he turns, it's going to be based on her. <laughs> and, and brothers, let's be honest. There are more men in trouble, more men in jail, more men who have done dumb stuff because of women than anything else in the world. All of the things in the world combined. Amen. So, so I thought it was interesting when I came across this list of five top prerogatives of women. Uh, let's see if you all will agree with these five. Uh, number five, shopping. Shopping. It's a woman's prerogative to engage in retail therapy. Uh, now, what's interesting about this retail therapy is she feels justified in this retail therapy whenever her favorite store, her favorite item, her favorite line of clothes, or her favorite mall is having a sale. Uh, even though she may not need the items, she feels justified in the purchase because the items are on sale, and even though she wouldn't buy them, in her mind, she's saving money. Shopping. Number four, moving things. Moving things. It's a woman's prerogative to change the placement of certain items that a man has set down. 
she must do this because the man puts said items in the wrong spot, usually in the woman's way. This may cause some momentary confusion for the man, but will be quickly straightened out as soon as he stops searching high and low and chooses to ask the woman where it is. The woman will happily help him find the item and tell him where it is, provided she is not exercising prerogative number three. Third prerogative of a woman, the silent treatment. It is a woman's prerogative to give anybody she chooses, especially her man, the silent treatment. The woman may give the silent treatment for as long as she chooses. This has been known to last anywhere from 10 minutes to 10 days. It is not in the man's best interest to provoke the woman into giving him the silent treatment in order to have quiet so he can watch a game. The woman has many other ways to loudly proclaim her displeasure. Second prerogative of a woman, keep him waiting. It is a woman's prerogative to make a man wait. It does not matter what the situation or the occasion is. He must be patient and greet her in a cheerful manner when she does finally make her appearance. For a woman to look her best, she must not be rushed. <laughs> Number one prerogative of all time is the right of every woman to change her mind. Now, the changing of her mind never needs to be based in logic, and it can be done over and over without limit. Don't perceive her as flaky or wishy-washy. Don't stereotype her as being overly emotional, and please don't claim that she is unstable. She reserves the right to engage in the harmless act of changing her mind as often as she sees fit. She can change her mind for a lot of reasons, or she can change her mind for no reason. It does not mean there is a change of heart or an emotional outburst. She is not inflexible. She is not unable to stay focused. It is just her right to change her mind. How many of y'all agree with those five prerogatives? Man, some of y'all, that's the loudest amen I got all this year. <laughs> They're like, truth, pastor, preach. I know you're telling the truth. <laughs> While changing her mind may be the woman's number one prerogative, for many of you, changing your mind needs to become your number one priority. Man or woman, boy or girl, there are many of you in here who are experiencing less than God's best for you because you have failed to make a change in your mind. A failure to change how you think or how you see items, whether it's pride or stubbornness, or a detachment from reality or this unrealistic optimism, you need to be willing to make a change in how you think. That's critical because when you learn how to make a change in how you think, you will make a change in how you live. Today, for a few moments, I want to talk to you from the thought, the blessings of changing your mind the blessings of changing your mind. Now, for somebody in here, you may not realize you need to change your mind. So I want to help you identify why you would be better served and better blessed if you made a change in how you think and in how you view things. If you have your outline, would you say amen? amen. If you need an outline, raise your hand and the ushers will get one to you. Now, our foundational text today is Matthew 21. Matthew 21 is an interesting passage of Scripture because it is the passage that teaches us how Jesus made his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. He cleansed the temple, he cursed the fig tree, and had his authority challenged regarding how and what he taught in the temple. The Jewish leaders had confronted Jesus in an attempt to discredit him. But Jesus refused to answer their question directly since they declined to answer his question regarding under what authority was John the Baptist ministering. 
Here is Jesus now. Giving them a parable to confound them, to teach them how powerful it is, how much of a blessing it is when you learn how to change your mind. Here's the first thing. Number one, if you're going to experience the blessing of changing your mind, you must realize you have the power to choose how you will live your life. You have the power to choose how you will live your life. Matthew 21, beginning at verse 28, the New Living Translation reads, But what do you think about this? A man with two sons told the older boy, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. The son answered, No, I won't go. But later he changed his mind and went anyway. Then the father told the other son, You go. And he said, Yes, sir, I will. But he didn't go. Now, the father gives both of these sons an opportunity to serve. He gives both of them an invitation to go work in the vineyard. They both receive the same instruction. They both receive the same opportunity. And the Bible says they responded in a different way. You know, one of the things that I've learned in life is when people claim they don't have opportunities, it's hard for them to argue from that perspective when there are people who are right next to them who had the same opportunity, one decided to take advantage of the opportunity that they had, and one decided not to. Each one of us has an opportunity in front of us to serve. Each one of us has an opportunity in front of us to do even greater than we're doing right now. This word for sons here, the Greek word technon, uh, speaks to children, not grown sons per se, but those who are at an age where they can articulate their displeasure, even though they don't have the necessary maturity to understand the implications or the ramifications for the decisions that they're making at the moment. Now listen, let's be honest. You don't have to be young to make a dumb decision. All you've got to do is be dumb to make a dumb decision, <laughs> right? All you need is a moment of insanity to make a dumb decision. And some of us, watch this, when we make a dumb decision, we can look back and go, uh-oh, and it doesn't take us a long time to realize that we've made a major mistake. But here's what God wants you to understand today. Someone today, God wants you to know that it may feel like it's too late for you to make a good decision. You may feel like the decisions in your past have so hindered you and so hurt you that you can do nothing about your present and you can do nothing about your future. Here's what God wants you to know. You still have the power to choose. You may feel like there's no hope. You may feel like you are without options. You may feel powerless, but God wants you to know you still have the option to make a choice. You can make a change. You can't change the decisions you've already made, but you can change the decisions you are making and the decisions that you will make. Now, what's the problem when you don't think you have options. The biggest problem is you'll keep going down the path that you went down when you didn't know better, even though now you know better. So when somebody says to you, you know what, man, I, there's no hope. There's no, 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 no. There's always hope. Why? Because you have the power to choose. You can choose to live and not die. You can choose to fight and not surrender. You can choose to go on and not give up. You can choose to live for God or to die in sin. You have a choice. Look at somebody and tell them you have a choice. You have a choice. Everybody has a choice. Can't change what I chose in my yesterday, but I can change what I choose to embrace in my today. 
you have the power to choose. Look at Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. But if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. Would you prefer the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates? Or will it be the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live? But as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. The power to choose. You have the power to choose how you will live your life. Now, if you're like most of us, you can look back and see where you have made many bad decisions. If you could go back, hey, you would change those decisions. You would do things differently. Well, here's a simple motto that I have begun to live by. No regrets, lessons learned. I can't go back. As a matter of fact, if I'm regretting, lamenting decisions that I have made in my past, guess what? I'm still tied to the past. I need to move forward. So how can I make sure whatever bad decisions I've made in the past instruct me on how I should make decisions in my present and in my future? No regrets, lessons learned. But you need to realize, accept, embrace that you have the power to change your life. Now, I know somebody's watching right now and you're saying, Preacher, you don't know what I've been through. Doesn't matter. You still have the power to change your life. You can change your thought process. You can change your actions. You can change your attitude. Watch this. You can even change your associates in terms of the people you hang out with. You have the power to choose. So maybe we should add one more word into that first point. You have the power to choose how you will live the rest of your life. It's not too late to change the ending of your story. It's not too late to get to that place where you say, and they lived happily ever after. Despite everything that they have been through, despite everything that you have gone through, every test should result in a testimony. God didn't bring you this far to leave you. I know you have been through a lot. I know you have suffered a lot. God knows that. But God says if it wasn't enough to take you out, then it shouldn't be enough to make you give up. God has not given up on you, so don't give up on God. You still have life. You still have health. You still have sense. What does God want you to do? Maybe you need to change, for example, in terms of your walk with God, your commitment to God, spending time with God in prayer, spending time in the Word of God. God wants to challenge you to make that change. Now, you know what I've learned in life? Typically, we don't embrace the power that God gives us and we give away that power to other people. So we allow other people to control how we feel, to control how we think, to control the condition of our spirit. We take in, we ingest those things, whether it's through the ear gate or the eye gate on the spirit realm. We take in those things and then wonder why we feel down, wonder why we feel bad. We, we, we surround ourselves with mess. We ingest the mess of this world and then wonder why we cannot behave or are not encouraged to live a life that's pleasing to God. You know what God wants you to know? The power to change is in your hands. Now, if you want something different from your life, then you've got to do something different with your life. Somebody right, right now, you're watching and you're saying to yourself, you know what, I, I need to make a change. Okay, great. But typically, here's what we want. We want to change the end results of our life but we don't want to change how we live. We want to keep on doing what we've been doing, living the way we have been living, and then pray and ask God to give us different results. Doesn't work that way. Whatever you want in your output, it starts with your input. If you want to change your output, you've got to change your input. You have to make some changes but you don't have to wait for somebody else to change you. 
You don't have to wait for somebody else. As a matter of fact, there's somebody you're watching right now. That's your biggest problem. You have been blaming everybody else. I mean, you have been blaming your, your parents, uh, your mother, your father. You, you, you blame your brother, your sister. You blame your husband, your wife. You, you blame your children. You blame everybody else. And, and if all else fails, you blame the devil. And God says the power to choose is in your hands. Joshua says to the children of Israel, choose this day whom you will serve. Make the choice. So my brothers and my sisters, if you can be blessed by changing your mind, by redirecting your thoughts, by making a different decision, then make the change. Don't wait for somebody else to give you permission. Don't wait for somebody else to okay it, to authenticate it, to verify it. You make the change for yourself because watch this, at the end of the day, you are the only one who will be held accountable for the decisions you've made. You can't stand before God and say, well, you know, God, see, it, it was that mother, it, it was that father. If, if you had given me a better mother, a better father, or God, if you had given me a better situation, no. If you know better, you need to do better. And you need to take responsibility to do better. I was talking to a young man, and this young man was telling me about what was going on in his life, and I'm telling him, I said, well, well, son, you need to take responsibility for your life. You need to make some better decisions. And he said, oh, I, well, I understand. You're right, sir. I need to make some decisions, you know, because I'm, I'm really immature and I'm really... And he started going through a litany of issues that he has, and I'm thinking to myself, man, if you are mature enough to tell me what's wrong with you, then you should be mature enough to make the right decisions and make changes in your life. That's what God says to you today, you have the power to change. You have the power to choose. Life, death, blessings, curses, to go to the next level or to stay where you are. That choice is yours. So when you think about the blessings of your, in your life, don't blame God because you don't have it. Don't blame other people. Look in the mirror and say, what change do I need to make within me so I can receive all that God has for me. We'll be back in just a moment to close our show today. Out of 34 international countries and cities, students in the U.S. ranked 14th in reading, 17th in science, and 25th in math. As your child prepares to enter a globally competitive economy, where will you enroll your child to learn the science, engineering, and math needed to compete with children around the world? You can't change the decisions you've already made in your life but you can change the decision-making process you use right now. And that's what I want to encourage you to do. I want to encourage you to make that change. Listen, if that son who said no didn't change his mind and say yes, he would have never received the blessings that God had for him. Now, that parable is told about a son and his relationship to his father. But when God tells this story, he's telling us about our relationship with him. And those who may have initially said no, but later changed their mind and said yes. For somebody who's watching right now, I want to pray for you that you would change, that you would move from the no to the yes that you would move from the place where you're doubting God, rejecting God, and move to the place where you are accepting God and walking in life instead of death. Now that's for somebody who needs the Lord. But if you know the Lord, here's what I wanna challenge you to do. 
Let's walk in a greater degree of obedience. Let's walk in a greater commitment to being a Christ follower. Let's make a decision today, just a little bit more to say, you know what? I got some stuff I need to change. I made some changes in my life, but I have some more stuff to change. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the blessing of being able to make a change. We know, God, that when we close our eyes and move from corruptible to incorruption, when this mortal puts on immortality, it will be too late to change our minds. But God, as long as we have life, health, and strength, we have the ability to change, and you give us the power to change. So for somebody today, God, I'm praying that they would exercise that power, that they would look in the mirror and say, you know what? I will no longer accept where I am as God's will for my life. I will no longer accept where I am as God's plan for my life. God, help them to embrace your plan for their life, and then God, give them the courage to make the changes they need to make, to say farewell to those they need to leave behind, and say hello to moving forward to a better day. We ask your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Each morning, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m., join Dr. D.Z. Cofield and Word of Hope Ministry with a relevant word to help you become all that God wants you to be. It's not about rituals. It's not about routines. It's not about religion. It's about a relationship with a God who loves you so much. He loves you where you are, but he doesn't want to leave you there. That's each morning, 7 a.m., Monday through Friday with Dr. D.Z. Cofield. Oh, and by the way, I'm D.Z. Cofield. I'll see you then. Thank <laughs> you.